Hey guys, so we're, we're done with the break. Um, so now I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about how you would transfer data into and out of NERSC. Um, this is actually a talk made by Jeff Porter, but he couldn't be here, so I volunteered to be the talky bits. Um, so here at NERSC, we have a dedicated uh, data transfer system. They're called data transfer nodes. Um, often we refer to them as DTNs, and sometimes DTN nodes, because we really like the word node. Um, then these are optimized for high-speed data movement into and out of NERSC. Um, so there's, they come with high bandwidth network interfaces, um, and we also have partnerships with um, various other DOE labs and other major facilities um, where we transfer data, we monitor and transfer data between them and make sure that the rates stay high um, and, are, and, and data transfers are optimized between these centers. Um, so on these DTNs, um, you'll have access to every global NERSC file system. Um, so this is the project file system. These are homes. Um, this is HPSS and Cori Scratch um, can be accessed on these DTN nodes. Um, and you can use these either to move data internally between NERSC systems um, and in between NERSC HPS and NERSC HPSS, and, uh, but they're primarily used to move large volumes of data into and out of NERSC. Um, so if you have a large data set that's at some other DOE lab or at your home institution, you need to move them in, you're most likely gonna come in via these DTN nodes. See me, DTN nodes. Um, so the recommended tool that we use, uh, that we suggest for moving large volumes of data is Globus Online. Have any of you guys used Globus? Okay, so at least you're, you're familiar with it. Um, it has a really nice UI. Um, and it takes care of a lot of the, the kind of nitty gritty details of data transfer. Um, it just it optimizes them for you, so it's really nice to use. Uh, if you like, you can just point your browser at www.globus.org. Um, and then once you go in there, you can authenticate with your nurse credentials. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. Um, but it has this nice GUI that comes up. It does um, automatic retries for failed transfers automatic parallel striping for large files, so you don't have to worry about you know, setting the granularity of your transfers. Um, and then it'll, it'll send you an email um, when it's finished and let you know whether it's irrevocably failed or um, succeeded, most of the time it succeeds. Um, if you're a NERSC user, you should be able to access our, glo our Globus endpoints. <coughs> and we maintain several different endpoints for optimized data transfers. Um, so most of the time, if you're doing a single one-off data transfer, probably the web UI is enough for you, uh, but they also have um, a nice, re uh, well, they have an, uh, a CLI, so you can do a RESTful API calls to do transfers. Um, and you can also set up an endpoint on your own laptop um, with this Globus Connect server um, if you wanted to transfer stuff more locally. So these are the managed, um, Globus endpoints. For most use cases, you're probably going to find that you'll be able to serve this with uh, the NERSC DTN endpoint. Um, we have three other endpoints that are for sort of special use cases. Um, the first is the NERSC HPSS endpoint. This is what you would use if you wanted to do transfers via Globus directly into and out of HPSS. Um, and then we have an Edison endpoint. Um, this is only if you need to transfer data from Edison Scratch. This is the only endpoint that has, a, has access to Edison Scratch. Um, and then we have a dedicated one for PDSF, um, which is for if you're doing transfer for local storage from, um, from uh, stuff that's local only to PDSF. Um, we have a couple other endpoints. These are obsolete. You'll still see them as options, but they're basically gonna refer you back to this DTN endpoint. Um, so this is a quick introduction to Globus. Basically, you point your browser at globus.org, um, and then the first thing you need to do is lo log in. Um, and it'll come in, it'll give you this Globus web app, it'll give you some choices. Um, you can log in either with the Globus ID, or you can use the NERSC, there's a pull down menu, and it'll tell you all the different various institutions that allow authentication via Globus. Um, so you can choose NERSC from this, uh, and then hit continue you'll be hit with this little page where it wants your NERSC username and password. You go ahead and fill that in. Once you do that, then it'll bring you to this page, which is the, this is the GUI that you'll be working with most of the time when you're transferring files. <coughs> so 
you can um, you can also click on endpoints if you wanted to look at what they are. So there's a whole bunch of tabs. If you go back here, you can see how there's these different tabs here: transfer files, activity, endpoints. Um, most of the time, you'll be in the transfer files. Sometimes you'll go to activity, and that'll show you the various tasks that you have waiting. If you want to look at how things are going, then you can look at our endpoints there. So if you go to the endpoints tab, and you select search all and type in NERSC, you'll see all the options come up. Um, it'll tell you whether or not you've activated them, um, which is fairly simple to do. Um, you just put in the name of the endpoint, NERSC DTN, that you want to activate. Um, and then it'll give you this prompt, and you'll activate it with your NERSC username and password. Um, the default activation time is 12 hours. Um, you can ask for more. You can go up to 277. Um, and it's just basically because we don't want to have live credentials sitting around being unused. So that's why there's this time limit. That's why you have to activate every so often. So once you do that, um, then it starts out, it shows you, it goes to this endpoint, it shows you everything that's in your, your home directory. Uh, and you can use, <coughs> you can either navigate by clicking or you can fill in this path. Let's say if you wanted to go to project, then you would just type slash project, projectors, whatever you wanted to go to. And then it would fill in down here. Um, so to transfer files, um, you navigate on the left-hand side to the files or directories that you want to transfer. And then on the right-hand side, you fill in the destination. So this could be another DOE endpoint. This could be inside of NERSC if you wanted. It could be an endpoint on your laptop. And then you tell it the path. Um, you highlight what you want to transfer over there, and you just click the, the big blue arrow. Um, and then this little box will come up and says, we're starting the transfer. It has a task ID. And if you want to follow what's going on with this, you can go back to that activity tab <coughs> and, and look at the various information about the task ID. Um, the destination endpoint, the uh, Google Chrome? They do have some functionality to transfer to a destination, a Google Drive, but I think you have to do something special on the Google Drive end to get it to accept Lotus transfers. I, I, we, we just did this like a week ago. Yeah. Um, you can do it through your LBL Google Drive account. And it, it, it's not actually that hard. You can, uh, there's some endpoints set up that you can kind of like connect to or duplicate or something like that and then just make it your own, but it's like super easy. Yeah, I think by default it's not on unless you have some special setting that's something set or like something. That, yeah. So so if it's a... You can see that the maximum transfer rate per day is 500 gigabytes. Google's uh, pretty notorious for throttling uh, transfers for of all kinds, even for email, so yeah. Um, yeah, so... Um, we also have, um, you can also log on to these DTNs directly if you need direct access. Um, it's got a pretty familiar module environment. Um, so if you needed to, like, let's say you wanted to do like a move or something and you didn't want to, it was small enough, you didn't really need to go through Globus or anything like that. You could log on to the DTNs and do it there. Um, um, so this is a section, okay, so um, transferring inside of NERSC. Um, to HPSS. Um, so we talked about this a little bit earlier. It's a tape system. It sort of has a, a sort of an interface a little bit like an object store. You do a put and a get to get things in and out. Um, so you can either use the DTNs um, to move data to and from NERSC to the file systems, or you can use the X for Q. Uh, kind of depends on the length of time that you're running and what you're looking for. Um, and you can also use Globus to do this. Um, the only caveat here is that Globus doesn't support um, aggregating files. So if you went to your Globus directory and you had 10,000 subfiles in there and you tried to transfer that into HPSS, you will get a, a ping from us saying that you are putting a bunch of small files into HPSS and we need you to bundle them up. Um, so if you need to do something like that, we recommend you do a sort of two-stage transfer. You bring it from whatever external endpoint to, let's say, your scratch directory. Then you bundle it up and you use HTAR to put it into HPSS. So if you have a large uh, amount of data that needs to be transferred um, or something that you don't feel like monitoring, um, we really recommend you use Globus Online if you can. Um, if you have something smaller, um, you, know, you can just do like a, just a secure copy between systems. Um, if you don't feel like dealing with Globus, uh, 
the only thing we ask is that you reserve the DTN nodes uh, just for data transfer stuff. Don't, if you have a workflow thing that you need to run, we have a different place where that should be. So just reach out to us and we'll open that up for you. Um, and <clears throat> if you're just trying to transfer within the NERSC file systems, you could just go with a plain CP. Um, I've actually seen a lot of people be fairly happy with using, like, let's say you have a couple terabytes of data you want to move from scratch to project. Um, a lot of people fire up Globus, and it's really nice because of the retries and the parallel file transfer, um, even within the center. <coughs> so something to, th to think about in terms of performance. Most of the time when we find that users are writing in, um, seeing slow transfers, it's often limited by the remote endpoint. Um, so if you, you can imagine if you're going from our high-speed DTNs um, to your university, or to your house maybe, to your Wi-Fi, to your laptop, um, the slowest point is going to be somewhere in that Wi-Fi chain, maybe you're on your laptop. Um, so if you can, if you have access um, to two performant endpoints, that's really the best way to move a lot of data around. Um, you sometimes can run into uh, problems where the file system is particularly slow. Um, we might be having a file system issue, in which case it's usually a transient problem. You'll come back and run the transfer tomorrow and it'll be very quick. Um, and we also don't recommend that you transfer large volumes of data into your home directory. Number one, you'll slam into the quota that's 40 gigabytes. It's also not optimized to be very fast. So if you have a lot of data coming into the system, aim for project, aim for scratch. Um, you know, and in any case, if you think you're not getting the performance you expect, you're having trouble, you have a lot of data you need to move in, you need help, just open a ticket and we'll work with you to try and get things, uh, get things moving. Um, so we touched about, t talked about this earlier. Um, if you had a bunch of data that you wanted to share in sort of a general way, um, you can create inside of your project directory a www directory, um, and then you can make anything in there world readable, and then this will give you a portal interface that you can go to portal.nurse.gov, project, your project name, and it'll show whatever is in that www directory. So this is a really quick kind of um, it's not the most performant way, but it's a very quick way to, like, I have a bunch of some files and I want to share with you. Um, and here's some links for more information. Um, otherwise, I'm done. Thank you.